Good afternoon, everyone. Received an email from John Casey. The link directing over to the new commentary, Peak Global Warming. You definitely need to visit this and read for yourself. He put out two predictions. First prediction, steep drops and monthly global temperatures starting this year. As well, prediction two, the warming that we've experienced over the last 20 years is finished. And this is going to affect food production and the implications for the human race will truly be something to remember. Now, this is the number one premier forecaster on the planet for solar activity. Talking about deep solar minimums, I jumped into NASA headlines to take a look at the total solar irradiance. Something shocking. These numbers are being manipulated as well. This is from 1980. It shows 1,366 at the benchmark for watts per square meter as a running mean smooth average. Remember that number, 1366. And we jump over, and this is what's available for us today. It starts at 1361. They're pushing the numbers down so you don't see the drop off. The world's leading solar forecaster, John Casey, is back. They got the new website up here. I just received an email directing me over to Peak Global Warming. I want to send you there as well. Everything's linked in the comment box below. I highly encourage you to take a look at what this says. John's the author of Dark Winter and explains fully how this deep grand solar minimum will evolve and how it will affect society. It's nothing but a repeating pattern. He's come out with a couple new predictions. This is the first prediction here, that there will be a steep drop in monthly global temperatures throughout this year. This is the beginning of it. Once the La Nina really kicks in at the end of the year, it is going to intensify. Second prediction, the global warming hype that has happened has been an exceptional increased period of solar activity over the last few thousand years. This was kind of at the peak. We're about to drop off that and go right into the cooling. This is going to affect global food production. That's the second prediction here. Now the last sentence of the summary, you need to sit down and look at this for just a moment because this is the person who's been the most correct in forecasting solar sunspots, the activity, the trends that we've seen on this planet, in terms of weather and snow and cold. The very last sentence reads, this year in 2016, the implications for the human race will be truly something to remember. And this is the reason I've been doing my channel too, is we are going to have to radically rethink the way that food production happens globally and the way it's delivered. Systems are gonna start breaking down as soon as the food costs go up too high. 2008 when oil went up and it crashed the economy not everybody drove a car yes I mean the delivery of the goods to the supermarket pushed all the food prices but what's gonna happen this time when the actual food prices go up to the point of people on government assistance can't even afford to eat any longer what's gonna happen when you're gonna spend 50 to 75 percent of your paycheck to buy food this is going to have incredible ramifications for our society. And I harp on the point, you need to get ready. And I cannot say it again. We have less than six years before we get into the maximum cooling. You have an, uh, another two to get ready before there are significant effects in global food production and costs are going to be rising five, ten times the price you pay now is what you will be paying for your food by 2019. That's not John's prediction, that is my prediction based on also what I have done for my research and seeing how this rollover is going to occur with the planetary alignments. Now John uses something called relational cycles to come up with his predictions. They're on multi-century overlapping cycles. I'll bring you to the NASA headlines. After I read John's update, I jumped over into the deep solar minimum, just Google searching around. NASA headlines back in 2009. Remember, this is 2009. They were at a 50-year low in solar wind pressure back then. Now we need to fast forward seven years. Also, they were at 55-year low in solar radio emissions in 2009. This is directly off the NASA website. But when you try to dig further for the links specifically 
for their forecast on the next couple of solar cycles going down what they entailed about the deep solar minimum page not found. They erased it. They must have had something in the predictions that they didn't want you to see so it's gone now. I'm going to bring your attention to the same set of headlines in the same story here. 12 year low in total solar irradiance. So I went back and I dug up the old 1980s chart with a TSI directly from NASA here that I downloaded from that same article. Look at the baseline on the left side there. That's watts per square meter. You'll see 1,366. Please remember the number 1366. This is a baseline mean average. So 1366 is what they originally had it at. And if you go to the far side over at 2007 and 8, you can start to see that it's dropping off. Fast forward to today. This is what I found that's released by NASA. Look where their baseline starts now. For the same period of 1975, it starts at 1361. You might ask yourself, why did it drop off five? You know why? Because they're masking the numbers. That would be a drop off of a five from 2007 forward showing significant decrease. They're hiding the numbers. They're masking the numbers. Just like they do with the NOAA temperatures. They've lowered all the TSI, watts per square meter indicator. So you think it's just in the same range, but I tell you what, that 2015 is not in the same range. And I had to do a double check just to make sure that the information that I'm presenting was correct for you here. So I found a, another chart from a different source showing the same NASA data, a couple different views here. So you can see exactly where we are with the TSI. Notice on the left side again, that 1367, 1366 mark for the late 70s for TSI. And then we'll jump right over into the same chart NASA released, 1366, and we'll come forward to today and you can see 1361. The back end of that chart would be absolutely straight off of a cliff. And that would be proof that we're in a solar minimum. We're heading there. This is the second year of it. As more volcanic eruptions occur and there's more ash in the atmosphere, there's just going to be blo more block out of the sunlight. And you can clearly see that would be a telltale sign. So this has been covered up. NASA, I'm calling you out. I'm saying you are lying to the people. You're manipulating the numbers. And I see right through your ploy to try to misdirect and misguide everybody. That's why I'm pointing it out right here. Right along the same train of thought here, Dr. Abutsimov from the Pulkovo Astronomical Observatory. He's the head of space research there. Put out a PDF linking the grand minimum to the total solar irradiance leading to little ice age or mini ice age. You can use both terms. This is actually one of the graphs that's inside the uh, PDF that he put out. Pull out of it here a little bit closer so you can see the sunspot count, which will be decreasing as well. This next solar cycle 25 will not even be above 50. It'll be between zero, maybe 30, if not even lower. If it's a grand solar minimum, such as the 1600s, we'll be right down back to close to zero. Digging through the info, I found Christoph Petrove, who I haven't seen before, but I did run into his abstract. Solar cycle 24 will probably mark the end of the modern maximum, with the sun switching to a state of less strong activity. All these people coming out now suddenly talking about the minimum upon us. The purple line far right going out to 2020 was one of the forecasts. As you can see, that's a little bit off. The original drew it all the way out to 2022, so they had to readjust here again. Taking a look at the top 25 years with the most number of spotless days since 1849, that's 160 years of time. So what are the chances out of 160 years that three of the years with the least amount of sunspots have occurred in 2007, 2008, and 2009? That is a statistical impossibility right there unless we are heading into a grand solar minimum. And the icing on the cake for me on this one was NASA can't even explain how the Antarctic ice sheet is gaining ice. This is the overlay in uh, varying areas where it's being lost or gained. I can explain it for you, NASA, deep grand solar minimum. The areas where they're losing a little bit of ice, that's where the volcanic activity is happening under the ice. Anywhere else where there's no volcanoes, it's increasing. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of this. Not only are their temperatures being manipulated globally to show a warming trend, but now we can clearly see that the total solar irradiance, the TSI, which shows how much sunlight is striking the planet's surface, being manipulated as well to show that there's really not a downtrend. 
but dropping from 1366 to 1361 is a huge drop. Please pass this through your social media. Appreciate it if you could flick it out in Twitter, Reddit, G+, Medium, anywhere you have a, a reach into the social sphere these days. This information truly needs to be shared.